So the next speaker is going to talk about the DAG Knight protocol, a parameterless generalization of Nakamoto consensus. Um, um, Jonathan is a postdoc from uh, Harvard. Okay, hi, um, I'm Jonathan, and this is um, the Dagnite protocol, it's a joint work with Michael Sutton from Dag Labs. Um, okay. So 14 years ago today, Satoshi released uh, his Bitcoin white paper. Um, and since then, um, I developed the hobby of, present, of devising alternative consensus protocols based on proof of work. It started with Ghost Protocol, Spectre, and Phantom Ghost Dad. Um, but none of these protocols, nor any other consensus protocol, achieves what we set out to do in Dagnite. So about three years ago, um, we, we set out on a journey to solve the following problem. We are trying we were trying to achieve a proof of work protocol that is resilient to 50% to up to 50% attackers without knowing anything about the network delay. Okay, so Bitcoin, or, or in its formal name, Nakamoto Consensus, or Phantom Ghost DAG, these protocols assume something about network delay. Bitcoin assumes network delay is much smaller than 10 minutes. Phantom Ghost DAG assumes a different parameter, but all of these works do not uh, assume something about the network delay. And we want to do something that we, we want to devise a protocol that does not assume anything. And this is no easy task. It took, it took us about three years. Um, and there's a good reason why it's not, a, it's not an easy task. It seems to contradict um, known impossibility results in the consensus literature. Okay. So a bit of a background intuition about synchronous versus partially synchronous protocols. So synchronous protocols are consensus protocols where the system, the consensus assumes uh, an agreed, a global um, upper bound on a network delay. For instance, Bitcoin's 10 minutes. Um, and the output is an ordering of the events in the system. Um, and, and okay, so you can achieve uh, resiliency to 49% uh, attackers. This is a known, a known result. Um, in partially synchronous protocols, the protocol is not allowed to know anything about the delay. So no 10 minutes, no other five, six seconds, or Ethereum, um, and that sort of stuff. And it's a well-known result that in that case, you can only achieve 67% um, um, or 34% resiliency to Byzantine attackers. Okay, so any attacker with a third or more of the hash rate can attack the system. So with these two results, it does seem that we set out to solve an impossible um, challenge. And indeed, throughout these three years, we did occasionally um, break down mentally. So what's the advantage of uh, having uh, not assuming anything about the latency? The advantage is you can be responsive to the network um, actual delay. Meaning, so in Bitcoin, we have the 10 minutes um, latency parameter, but since then, the network, the network infrastructure has improved immensely, but we're still stuck with this block interval of 10 minutes. And similarly, in any consensus protocol that is synchronous, you are stuck with a parameter that you began with. So if you, if you have a block, uh, time of 12 seconds, um, then you're stuck with it even if the network is much, much uh, faster. So we want to have a consensus protocol that is responsive, can, uh, can perform tightly with the actual network delay, 
and I'll be more precise about that shortly. But it's still resilient to 50%, to up to 50% um, attackers. Um, okay, so what do I mean by being, um, uh, being responsive to the actual network delay? If by that we mean to the network delay that we observe in the system, then this is impossible to solve. This is a known impossibility result, both in the permissioned uh, partial synchrony literature and um, in the permissionless and the proof of work literature. There's a work by uh, Pass and uh, Xi um, that show that indeed you can't achieve this property. But you can achieve this property if you, if you want to be responsive, not to the network delay that you see in the current network, but to the maximal delay that you believe an attacker can impose on the network. So let's say I see that the Bitcoin blocks are propagating within one or two seconds. This is not enough. I need to additionally assume, okay, an attacker uh, cannot delay the blocks in the system by more than 10 seconds. So my parameter is 10 seconds. So this, this is very important to emphasize. We are not responsive to the actual network delay that you observe. We're responsive to the actual worst case delay that you, believe to be, that you believe the network to have. And I emphasize you believe because any user can set her own beliefs. There's no agreement on this parameter. You can run your full node with 10 confirmation, wait for 10 confirmations, and believe the delay to be um, two seconds, and you can run your full node with um, 30 seconds and believe the delay to 30 confirmations and believe the delay to be 10 minutes. It's, it's a user's local decision to decide whether they want what parameter to set for D. Okay, so what is block DAG? Um, by now it's a more well-known uh, construction, but basically any construction of a proof of work um, that does not wait you know, for every block to propagate through the entire network, every asynchronous proof of work will result in a DAG. Okay, so in a DAG, there's all, all, these, all these events are just blocks that are mined regularly as in the proof of work uh, manner. And the only difference is instead of just pointing at the winning chain, at the longest chain or the ghost chain, you point at every block that you see. Okay, so for instance, the miner of block Z in this example m saw the entire, saw like Y, W, X, and until the genesis block, and therefore added two pointers to these blocks. Okay, this is, this is like basically a DAG, and what do we need consensus for in this system? We need to know how to order um, blocks that are not related through the DAG topology. What do I mean by that? So, so block Z in this example is clearly mined, was clearly mined after Y and W. Right, because it has a hash pointer to them. And block Y was similarly mined provably after block X. But what is the relationship between Y and W and what happens when there's a double spend between them? This is the only role of the consensus protocol. So the single role of a DAG consensus protocol is to output a linear ordering on the DAG so that we are sure that all nodes understand whether a Y precedes W or W precedes Y. All other blocks that have a topological relationship, relationship are, are, do, not, do not need to be explicitly ordered. Lastly, the parameter K is basically the DAG width. So if you think about, let's say there's, the delay in the network is 10 seconds and there are 10 blocks per second in the system, then you would expect under normal circumstances that the DAG width will be 100 blocks. Okay, in this example, the DAG width is about four or five blocks. And now the core issue is whether you know K or not, whether the protocol assumes K in advance or not, whether, you, whether the protocol designer hard-coded the parameter K or the parameter D into the protocol. Okay. So DAG night uh, extends or um, 
was built upon previous work, the Phantom paper, which I co-authored. And in Phantom, we presented a generalization of the Bitcoin protocol. So without getting into too much detail, just using intuition, um, in Phantom, we observed that in a DAG, you can notice what the honest set of blocks is. And the honest set of blocks is the largest K-connected set. What is a K-connected set? It's just a, 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 a set of blocks, marked here in blue, that are almost fully connected to each other, save maybe four blocks. So every block in the, in the blue set that you see here is connected to all other blue, blue blocks, apart from at most four blocks. And without needing to understand exactly how we define it, you get the intuition. If I tell you that the DAG width is four on average, or what you expect the DAG width or the DAG asynchrony to be four blocks, this means that on average, in every um, unit of delay in the network, there are four blocks that are mined in parallel. That's what you expect. In which case, you should look for a set of blocks that resemble this structure, this ex pre predicted or ex expected structure. And well, an attacker can also form such a cluster, such a set of well-connected, K-connected blocks. However, that the attacker has less than 50% of the proof of work. Therefore, the attacker will not, earn a, will not own a majority of the blocks. OK. OK, so, so the, the holy grail of Dagnite, and this was, was the, the, the main breakthrough that Michael presented three years ago, was that we don't need to know K in advance. While Phantom knows K in advance, it gets as a parameter the, DAG, the expected DAG width. Um, Dagnite does not need to know it. And instead, Dagnite solves a min-max optimization problem. It searches for the minimal K such that the largest K cluster um, achieves 50 a majority of the DAG. So it's a very nice um, paradigm shift, and I encourage you to read the paper. Um, in general, it's a very long journey. So um, it started with a very um, simple pseudocode, and uh, it ended up like this. Um, and it's not only a matter of implementation, there are profound reasons for these uh, procedures, for these complications, which we detail in the, um, in the protocol, in the paper, which we will upload um, today, marking the 14-year the anniversary of the Bitcoin white paper. Here's a short summary of um, comparison to our to, to previous works uh, in DAG. Um, yeah, and I guess I'll conclude with that. I'll ask. Um, so your definition of responsive is not the traditional one. You already alluded to that. Um, in Bitcoin, uh, the only uh, manifestation of uh, the assumption that you know something about the network propagation delay is by setting the proof of work hardness to be yeah. much, much lower than what you assume. You never wait explicitly delta to make sure that you get. Uh, um, yeah, so, so the formal definition would be, is your, is your protocol um, um, given a certain target uh, lambda? Is, is the dif set the difficulty adjustment, the block rate to whatever it is you want to have. You want to have one block per millisecond, one block per, per second, per 10 minutes. Set that as a constant in the system uh, and use difficulty adjustment as in Bitcoin. And then the question uh, we ask is, is the protocol secure for any latency? So fix lambda fix the block creation rate, and now devise a consensus protocol that is secure for any D. And we argue that there's no proof of work or indeed no other consensus protocol that has achieved it, and it's in fact impossible to achieve without proof of work. Thank you. Thanks. All right, thank you very much, and I would encourage you to take the uh, discussion um, offline further. So with that, let's thank the speaker again, and we'll be welcoming the last full talk um, of the session before the spotlight session.